story here that a man called Sheikh Abbas that can you please come in our house uh, we have a dead body we want you to give ghusl to that body so the Sheikh says uh, no problem okay so Sheikh went all the way to the place and Sheikh is saying that once I reached it was not a house it was not a villa it was a castle a big you know castle and then from the door from the main door in order to get inside maybe you have to walk for literally five minutes that big you can imagine this is the only outside of the house so the Sheikh is going inside and, and mashallah the house is you know garden trees grass and all this uh, luxury stuff he said until I reached at the you know door the main door of the house the entrance so there was a, like a, a normal man standing there so he spoke to Sheikh in a very rude way he says uh, go this way you will find the road or you will find the stairs up there is a room so Sheikh is like almost 60 years old above you know an old guy respectful person he looked at him and he says uh, uh, you know I'll just go I'll go by myself so he says uh, either you go or I'll, I'll send one of my one of my servants to take you so Sheikh didn't like it like you know uh, and he, you're the person who called me all the way just respectfully at least take me so the Sheikh repl replied back he says see I can I can go I don't need uh, anyone I can just go all the way uh, so the Sheikh, uh, the guy said uh, after that, he says, if you don't know the way, I will send someone, my servant to take you. So Sheikh looked at him and he says, see, I'm not your servant. I came here for some noble cause. I'm doing it fi sabilillah. So I'll go by myself or you call someone else, he will do it for you. So the man says, okay, okay, you know, fine, go. And the man saying, the house, the castle inside, it's so big and it's so clean that you can see your face from the tiles on the floor. That clean and that big the house is. Anyways, he went all the way to the upstairs and he went inside the bedroom. Literally, Sheikh saying the bedroom was like eight by eight. A big bedroom. And there are like a, two or three uh, servants there. And no one else and he went all the way to see the body now he once he saw the body the body was covered he removed the face to see the cover and he saw literally that ants literally coming out from his nose from his ears and stuck to his face and his neck the more he is removing that thing the cover he can see the body is filled with small ants the red ants the small one that bites so the sheikh was like completely shocked that he's looking down nothing clean everything is clean nothing from where this this ants coming and literally some of the ants moving going inside the ear going inside the nose coming out from the other nose so he said i, I put it back now how can I manage this, this uh, situation? So he said, I called another Sheikh. And he said, Sheikh, I have a XYZ condition, XYZ problem, that the ant is coming from the body, so what should I do? So other Sheikh, the one he called to ask his advice and ask his fatwa, the other Sheikh says, uh, yeah, Sheikh Abbas, if you ask me about, you know, how to give ghusl on a certain way, I can tell you, if you want to ask me how to give ghusl to a dead body who is completely, you know, burned burn out, I can tell you. If you ask me about fiqh, uh, ghusl means like, you know, the fiqh of, of uh, giving bath to the dead body who is into pieces, I can still tell you. But now the condition you are telling me, not, it's not even mentioned in, in, in the book of fiqh. So, so I cannot, you tsarraf. you take the lead, I cannot do anything, you just do. I cannot advise you anything, like what, what you can do. So again, the Sheikh is asking the servants, 
Who's here among the among the kids, among the boys? No one. Okay, what about the one who, who just met me downstairs? Baba Mumajud. The, 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 you know, our, our sponsor or the, the person is not, not available. So he's alone with the servants. So he said at the end, what I thought, I went inside the, the room, there's a bathroom. I went inside the bathroom. I saw the tub. And this is, he's saying, I'm, I'm just getting these, you know, thoughts from Allah Almighty. I don't know what to do. So I went to, to the, the tub. I closed the, 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 uh, the sink and I opened the water, the tab, until the, it, it fills up. And then I went back to the body. I asked the servants to carry the body with me. And we went inside that tub and I put inside his nose and inside the ear uh, cotton. And we dipped the whole body inside the tub. So the ants start floating on the water. So this is what he, he did. The, you know, he is start again putting it up, putting it down on the water, the, the floating ants, he is removing it. And then he is wiping the, the, the body and everything until all the ants that goes away. But he is, he is astonished and he is surprised that where are these ants coming from? The house is so clean, the house is marble, that you know, all the marble and tiles, that there is no way that there is a hole and the ants are coming from. Anyways, long story. He took it out from the, from the tub. He went back, he put it on the, on the uh, bed again and he started wrapping the body with the kafan and then putting the usual thing, sidr and, and atr and fragrance and all these things on the body and wrapped him up. And then he finished his work, he went down and while he is going, he saw one guy just, you know, walking, one of the sons. So he went and he says, uh, I finished the, the ghusl of, of your father and uh, like is there anything else you want me to do? So dis dis disrespectfully this person, this son, he says you can see that room, this is the room of the drivers, you can go there and eat with them. So subhanAllah again the shaykh like you know what is this like you know what, what this ta'amul, what is this mu'amala, what is this like you know a way of uh, dealing with people. Like, no, Jazakallah khair, no thank you, nothing. And he says, yeah, there is a room, there are all the drivers, you go and eat with them. So he looked at him and he says, you know, I'm not, I'm not you know, looking for the food and I'm not, not looking for the thing, uh, any, any money from you. All I need is ajr from Allah Almighty, reward from Allah Almighty. So, so just, you know, uh, leave me alone. And the Shaykh left. So, uh, and then Shaykh went all the way and stood at the road because the one who brought the Shaykh, he was one of the drivers. And the shaykh now doesn't want any, any help from, from this person. So who came? A grandson of, of, the, of the dead, per, dead, uh, dead person. You know, the son was disres disrespectful. So the son of the son, the grandson, was about like, you know, young, 18 years old. When he saw the shaykh standing on the road, he went all the way, you know, to him and, and started dealing with him in a nicely. He says, sorry, you know, we have this situation, that situation. So don't mind. I'll bring my car and I'll drop you. He says, shaykh, no, I don't want. He says, no, 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 no I will bring my car. Anyways. He got his car, come Sheikh, sit inside. So normally, the Sheikh's habit, when he sees these things, either it's something good or something bad, he normally asks the person, like, you know, what this person used to do, you know, so, so he will know. So he started asking now the grandson. He said, now listen, my son, the one I gave ghusl to, who is he? So he said, he's my grandfather. He says, now, do you know what I saw? He says, yes, we all know. We all know that, you know, there's ant coming from his body, coming from his nose, coming from his ears, coming from, you know, his body and, and, and biting the entire body. And we don't know, or we didn't know what to do. And that's why we're not even willing to come and stand next to him. So the Sheikh says, La hawla wa ta'ala billah. And then, may I know, may I know what your, you know, uh, grandfather used to do? So the son is driving and he kept quiet for some time and he says, Sheikh, my grandfather used to literally beat his mother, literally, without any respecting any family member. He used to literally beat, slap, kick his own mother. SubhanAllah, can you imagine? And the Sheikh is listening to that and he is in shock. Like how come a person, a living human being on, on this earth, 
can do that. Can do that. So he said, yes. Into the extent that the bruises shows on my on my uh, you know uh, grandmother, grand grandmother, the bruises shows on her face and on her eyes, on her uh, hands. And then my father, you know, my father, you know, the, who's say, who's talking now, the grandson. So he's saying, my uh, father, who is the sons of the uh, one who died, they literally used to take the mother to the to the uh, police station. That you know, you should report this man. You should say anything about him. So they used to take him literally to the all the way to the to the police station. And when the muhaqqiq, when the when the uh, the inspector comes and asks, uh, Hajiya, what happened to you? She says, No, I fell down. I was uh, standing and then something. So I said, Yeah, there are bruises. Yeah, yeah, I fell down on the floor. So she never ever says anything against her own son. And this happened like literally every single week and every single two weeks until the police station knows that this is happening in the house but we cannot do anything because the mother is refusing to say anything. And the sons cannot do anything because you know the one who is doing this is their father. And, and no one can do anything. So subhanAllah, the ending of this person was that you know even when he died, neither the son, neither the other son, the third son, the grandson, able to, to, to help this man, neither standing next to his qabr or next to his body. Moreover, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished him in this dunya by, by making the ants, and Allahu alam where this ants came from, from the body itself, from somewhere else, and went inside all the body and, and, and biting him. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, kasar uh, idham uh, al-mayyit, uh, the, the meaning of the hadith that uh, uh, you break or breaking the bone of a dead body as you broke his, his uh, bone if he is alive. Which means like you know the pain that he will go through the dead body is exactly the same pain that he will go through if he was alive. So imagine now the ants going inside the nose and coming from the other nose or going from the ear and coming out of the ear and biting all the neck and all the face and all the uh, body from head to toe what he is going through, yes, the only reason that, that a live person can, can scream, can shout, can you know, uh, show the, the, his pain, and this dead body cannot say anything, but the pain is the same for both. So this was the uquba, and uh, according to the ulama, the ittifaq of, of all the ulama, that the consequences of the parents the, the uh, whatever you do to your parents in this dunya you will see it before the akhirah so if you were if you was good to your parent and if you are doing good to your parent you will see the consequence or you will see the result of it in this dunya and if you are bad with them if you are disrespecting them and the the the, the, the crime is if you are extending your hand towards them you will see the same situation before you die in this dunya and subhanallah this Another hadith, uh, another story that I just remembered, which is similar to the to the uh, story of, of uh, disrespecting, that one young boy, you know, he got some some argument with his father about something. You know, he's coming late or going out with the, with the car or whatsoever. So there was some argument in the house with the between the father and between the son. So the son is young, 18 years old, little you know, a uh, bodybuilder and the father is little, getting a little old. So some, you know, argument happened and the father slapped the son. As usual, if there is no terbiyah, if there is no upbringing, this is what will happen. So the son starts slapping the father and start beating the father because he is, you know, young and he is macho man whatsoever. And then he says, you want to throw me? The son is saying to the father, you want to throw me out of the house? I'm the one who will throw you out of the house. So he dragged him from, from his collar and he started grabbing him all the way outside the door. He opened the door, he threw him outside. The father fell down. He says, you know what, I will, I will throw you on the street. So he took his leg, the father's leg, and he started dragging him from the stairs. You know, normally at any house, you have like a five, four steps. So he's dragging him from these steps. So one of the steps when he reached, he grabbed on the, on the road. You know, there's a road, a steel road. He stopped himself. And he says, that's it, my son, that's it, my son, because I dragged my father to this point. Subhanallah. 
I dragged my father to this point. And this is exactly what happened after many years that his son dragged him all the way to this point. So this is what the ulama said that, you know, whatever you do to your parents, it will happen to you and you will see the result or the consequences of it in this dunya before al-akhirah. Akhirah is something else. Akhirah is something else. If you did something good, alhamdulillah, the good things will happen to you. But if you did something bad, then the, the adab and adab al-qabr and the barzakh and all the way until the day of judgment, what will happen? Allah knows best.